Hello, welcome to Plugins for Lab Tech. Today we're going to demo backup windows, uh, a little different configuration, a little more advanced. This time we're going to set up a backup uh, of a local Windows server and then off-site that backup to a, uh, a remote archive so that we have now have, quote, off-site backup. Let's get started. So we're going to open up our console here. And in our console, I am going to work with our little drone school here. Uh, today we're going to back up the Drone 2008 server to a share on the drone server. And then uh, we're going to set up uh, backup replication so that we copy that backup to an SFF or SFFTP service. Let's get started. Get this guy open, there we go. Click on backup windows here. A little slow to respond this morning. There she goes. All right, as you can see, we're starting out with a empty backup. We are not running anything. Our off-site sinks are disabled as well. So we're going to go through a process of setting up, uh, and this is going to be in kind of a lab environment. But, uh, uh, so you'll, you can follow along with what we're doing and how we're doing it. We're going to go ahead and deploy a quick SFTP service uh, to capture our, our, our backup archives being off-sited. We're going to do this in, in, an in kind of an enclosed lab environment to give you an example of how to go about doing it uh, so that you can uh, move forward putting this into a production-level environment or, or in the environments that you're in and kind of understand how the flow of everything works. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to jobs, and we're going to, we look like we've already got it enabled, so we're enabled already for backups. So, let's go and create ourselves a backup. So, we're going to do the C drive of this particular server, because we can see here, that's what it has. It has a C drive, it's about 32 gigs, 33 gigs. So, we're going to use that drive. All right, and we are going to use a custom target, and our custom target is going to be our uh, drone server. So we're going to go whack, whack, uh, I think we called it local backup. We can actually find this out. So let's go take a look at how we find this information out. What share did we create on this server to back up to? Let's take a look. All right, go to network. Local backup. So that's the share that we're looking to go to. So we're going to go back to our machine here. We're going to go drone dash server. And I put a directory there called drone2008. And then we always need to make sure we put a uh, an ending slash on our network share locations. So you can see here. All right, we're going to start this back up. Let's say it's 9 o'clock, so let's go for 10 a.m. Because we're going to continue to use this example moving forward today with our off-sync. So we're going to go into a couple time warps here and stop and start our video as we uh, progress through our backup process so that you get to be able to see in kind of a fast line time uh, how the backups and the synchronization take place, where the, where all that stuff happens, and how to move it forward. Um, so we're going to create ourselves just a standard full-on backup. Now, since we are going to be using off-site sync, and we're pointing to a network location, we need to provide an address, a password and username here. If we decide we were not going to use off-site sync, and we were doing it to a local target, we would not need a username and password. So let's go here. This is called drone labs slash for simpleness. There we go. So this is the basic settings we need to get a full backup done. This would be a backup that's completely recoverable, uh, including bare bones. If you needed to do uh, a move the system over to a virtual machine or, 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 re or reinstall it to a, another physical hardware, you want to make sure that you're doing it all critical. 
All right. Everything else here can be completely left just as it is. We'll go ahead and save the job. Uh, okay, custom path. So we are, what happens here is sometimes it didn't get clicked. So we're going to just come back here and just click that again. Save job, and you'll notice that it saved that now. I like that. Sometimes this doesn't show as clicked, so you got to kind of click it. If you don't, if you just come in here and do not select anything in your custom, just drop it down and make sure your custom is selected. And we're going to let this thing go off. It's now going out and determining uh, what settings need to be changed on the machine to make sure that it can back up based on the schedule. It should come back and say it's enabled. It is excellent, so that means we're good to go. You can see here all the stuff that's being included. Uh, inside that backup and so when we now have a backup enabled for 10 a.m. awesome so now that we have that done uh, we're ready to move over to offsite sync first thing we're going to do is we need to set up a offsite database or offsite backup directory synchronization service so we need to set this field up and save it first before we enable our directory syncs. When we enable and disable our sync, that actually goes out to the end system and forces the schedule to be configured uh, and the sync to be active. So if you want to turn sync on and off, this is the button to do it. You can save a sync at any time, and as long as this is disabled, you should not be deploying or doing actual backups, uh, scenes, sync jobs. We have a couple extra buttons over here. One, we could force a manual sync right now and kind of watch it. Uh, keep in mind that most syncs take a significantly long time based on the amount of storage and the location of the directory you're syncing to uh, remotely. So this could take a long time and time out uh, from a lab tech perspective here. It would still run in the background on the end system, but uh, lab tech at some point will dump the connection after 15 minutes or so. So if your sync's going to take longer than that, there's a good chance that you're going to only see so much data in your terminal window here before it stops. The sync on the other end would continue. Um, uh, or if we ever need to redeploy our sync software uh, to the end remote system for some reason because uh, the sync didn't work or we skipped it during the setup, which I'll show you here as we go through the setup process, you can also always resend that data that the all the software and configurations that are needed uh, for this system to sync to the remote storage. Uh, you can always resend that back down to the system if you have any problems by using this button. So as you can see today, we support the SFTP protocol. Uh, we are going to put in a server address. So we're going to put in is that correct? SVR, sorry, SVR. So there's our target address, which is our drone server. Our remote directory that we're going to be backing up to, which we'll talk about, we're going to go ahead and make it a slash for the root directory. Uh, username and password, again here, it's going to need a username and password. Now I want to use a, um, I'm going to call it uh, my SFTP admin. All right, and let's just for shits and grins, call it password. So this is, you're, we're going to change this. I'm using this as just generics. Uh, we need to put in a fingerprint and we need to set a time. What is a fingerprint? A fingerprint is basically this. It's, it defines the type of protocol being, or the type of uh, encryption being used, the size of the encryption algorithm, bit, bit size, and the, it's, it's key identifier, it's fingerprint. So we need to have these three pieces of information from the SFTP server so that we can validate that that is the legitimate server we should be pushing our backups to and we didn't get uh, horn squabbled into another machine uh, that maybe shouldn't be getting these, this, this, this particular data. So this is a way for us to securely identify the server address that you set here as a valid address for us to pass backups to. All right. So how do we get all this information? And where do we get our SFTP server? That's some great information. Let me show you how that works. Um, we, I'm going to do a quick, let me move it over here. I am going to do a quick, here we go, get into our little virtual environment here. 
um, uh, F FTP server set up. There is a server out a server out there uh, available. Um, uh, give me a second here, and I'll pull it for us. Do, 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 do. Um, actually, I don't want that. I want to put on my server first. So let's go to. Is it this one? Nope, not that one. Sorry, guys. This one. Uh, there we go. There's our drone server. So let's go ahead and open up a console on that. Give it a second to pop up there, or did it already pop up? Uh, drone server, yes, there it is. Okay, so we have our drone server. Okay, so I'm using a 2012 R2 server as my, my drone server to support uh, the backups coming onto it. So this volume here is my backup volume that I'm using all my other systems to push to. Uh, this Again, this is just a, a, a lab environment, so we're kind of having to use the systems we have available to us uh, to make all this work. Um, so, uh, setups in a production or more um, or a more utilize, utilized environment is going to be a little different than this. So, just keep that in mind. Uh, so, we're backing up all our drone servers to here, this drive here. We're also going to, in this, in, in this environment, we're going to go ahead and create ourselves another folder called remote. Backups. All right, and what that's going to be is this is going to be the directory that we store all our SFTP backups. So we're going to turn this server into an SFTP server as well and have it or have the workstations basically clone or synchronize their local backup to this remote backup. Okay, so I would assume that this machine is a machine way out there on the internet. It doesn't happen to be sitting right beside it holding the same archive uh, as this is a lab environment. Um, but it's actually uh, two different machines pulling two, you know, having two different directories, two different locations. We're just happen to be using the same machine. Uh, there are several different SFTP applications and programs out there. There are you can also use Linux systems. Linux systems are all shell-based SSH systems. Uh, very easy to install uh, SSH and enable that on a Linux box. Uh, and you can deploy Linux systems directly from Amazon or GoDaddy or uh, any number of other outbound uh, services, external cloud level services on the internet will support uh, quick build Linux systems that you can just kind of push a button, fire that Linux system up, uh, set up some basic permissions in it, create yourself a drive hanging off of that Linux system that you can store your, shell, your shares on, uh, and start using that Linux system uh, as an SFTP server to connect. If you're into Windows and, you're, and Windows is really your game, uh, there are some Windows versions. You can get uh, OpenSSL, or excuse me, OpenSSH. Uh, or you can come into Google like this and do SFTP for Windows. All right, and what you're going to see here is we're looking for servers. SFTP server Windows. Right, and what we're going to do here is we're going, we should be able to find, first off, a bunch of how to install. Uh, if you're looking to do that, okay, like OpenSSH here, uh, is a very good, very secure one. If you're really wanting to get into details of, uh, um, uh, of setting up a, uh, a very secure server, great way to go. Um, we also, uh, uh, out there, there is, um, there is a free one out there floating around, a, a very simple one. Um, give me a second here, see if I can find it for you. Uh, where is it? It's called, give me a second here. Well, I can't believe we don't see it in the first list of windows here. Okay, give me one second. I'll pull it up. That would be... Let's 
Let's go here. I have another one running in the background over here. So this FTP service is by Rebex. All right, and it's a free one, a little tiny SFTP server. It is portable, so it's just an EXE and a config file. You launch the EXE, you adjust the config file, and you hit the start and stop button, and it, and it operates a, uh, um, a basic tiny SFTP server. And you can see here it logs and shows you the connections coming in and out. So let's go to this Rebex.net. So let's go back over to our drone server here. And we're going to say we want to go to lab. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. And you can see here, here's our site. And we're going to go scroll down to utilities. And you'll find here very small minimalist FTP server, SFTP server. All right, and it is free for commercial and non-commercial use, so you can use it if you'd like to uh, on Windows System. Keep in mind, it's not a server service, so you kind of have to push the button on it. It's great for testing stuff and making sure stuff's working uh, and to play around with some secure file transfers. Uh, but since it's not a full-on service, um, uh, it means when the computer reboots, this application stops working and you have to go over and relaunch it manually. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind for using software of this nature uh, that you might run into things like that. So let's go ahead and get these things extracted. These are the two things that we need. We're going to copy them out. Paste them in here. It's fine. All right. So there we go. The first thing we're going to want to do is edit this config. Okay, we're going to change our user, which, uh, if I remember correctly here, let's take a look at we, what we called our user. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, my SFTP admin is what we called it. So let's go ahead and go back into that. My SFTP admin. Password, that's fine, and the root directory. So the root directory here is going to be this one. So we're going to come grab this, copy that. Excellent. So we now have our username, our password, and our directory we're going to store stuff to. That's all we need. Go ahead and save it. Close. We should now be able to execute our Rebex Tiny SFTP server. Go ahead. I don't need to ask that every time. If everything works, it should load up and go, hello. All right. And it did. It loaded the PS keys. All right. Now we can start. All right. We have now started our connection. So we are now listening on port 22 with an SFTP service that's ready to store files, which is great. So we're kind of set here and ready. Now we need to figure out what our key is for this. So how do we figure out our key? Well, I've come to determine the best way I do this is I go grab WinSCP. Free application, great little program. Go ahead and grab its portable version. I, that's fine with that. Give it a second. There it goes. It comes down here. We're going to open it up. Open a folder. There we go. And we should have this application here that we can now uh, copy. Paste right here on the desktop. And let's open our connection to our server. So our server address is going to be, let's try 127.0.0.1. My SFTP admin and PASSWORD password. We're not going to save it or anything. We're just going to go ahead and log in. And it should prompt you for a new key. 
There it goes. Now, see, it has found your key. Now, we can copy this key. There we go. Make sure that we copy it. Excellent. So now we have a copy of this key. Uh, we can come over here and let's do a new text document. And paste that key. And there's our key. So now we have access to our key. So you know what your you know what your key is. Key is. And then you can log in to verify that the SF SFTP service is actually working. And it is, because we went from here right into our root. So we are good to go. Hit OK. Cancel this. Yeah, we're done with that. All right. So now we need to get this key uh, over to our lab tech configuration. So to do that, let's see here. Um, let's see if we can, I'm not sure if we can copy that key here. Let's give it a try and see if it will copy. We can copy it there. We might be able to get it out here and into our, nope, no pipes. So no, we have no copy from my, from my office or from my VMware shell. So I've got to, I'm going to have to manually type that in. That's okay. We'll deal with that. So give me one second here. Let's pull up our backup software. There we go. And we're going to just type that key in right here. So we're going to say that we are SSH-RSA space 2048 space. And then we're going to do 70 colon 56 colon 33 colon 3F colon 64 colon C0 colon B8 colon BB colon B6 colon B1 colon 03 colon B E colon 6A colon uh, 4F colon 1, 1 colon 8, 8. All right, so there's our SFFTP, or sorry, SFTP SSH fingerprint. All right, let's just verify that that looks correct. I'll make this lowercase just so that we keep consistent. Okay, yeah, 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 looks good. All right, and let's see, since we set our backup to be at 10 a.m., normally backups take about an hour, hour and a half, depending on the size of the system. This was actually quite small, so it wouldn't take that long. So we've got set for 10. How about I set this one for 12? It allows me two hours between my backup and the sync time start. All right, go ahead and save sync. And when you save sync, it's going to come up and ask you. Uh, before we can sync, we're going to have to deploy all the sync software configuration files and everything else that we need to make sync function correctly. Do you want to deploy that now? If you choose no, it, sync will not be able to take place until this is deployed. You can always come back and deploy it using this. So right now, we're going to go ahead and say yes. Let's go ahead and deploy that. So this goes out now and starts to do that process. Give it a few minutes. It doesn't take a few minutes. It should only be a minute or so here. There it is. It's now installing it. Pushing down all our command files that are needed. And deployment is now complete. We're done. Okay, so now we've got our sync set up. And we're ready. We've been deployed. We've got all our stuff there. We're ready to actually enable sync. So at this point, we go ahead and enable sync. Give it a second here. You'll see the gears are going to turn there for a second while it goes off and does the enable. Should come back and say that sync is ready to go. So let's give that a second. Now, this is what we'll need to do to do a complete full backup of a system and set up network syncing uh, so it syncs off-site. Uh, to a remote share. Um, <clears throat> once this is done, we just need to kind of let it roll and uh, let the backups take place, time schedules to hit, and we should be good to go. 
All right, so off-site sync schedule has been deployed. So we are now ready to go. So this system here is enabled for backups. We've definitely got backups ready to go. It's going to be starting off at 10 a.m. Uh, after which, we're going to sync those backups, unfortunately, to the same server. But uh, in this case, we're going to assume that this is some off-site server that we've set up. Uh, we've gone through, as part of this process of getting the sync system set up, we've set up a demo sync site here uh, on our server using Rebex, um, tiny F SFTP server. Uh, I would suggest a Linux system makes great uh, SFTP. Also, uh, using uh, OpenSSH uh, uh, inside of Windows. You can do that on a Windows box, both of those are freely available uh, for you to use and deploy uh, so that you can de you can define these backup services at no cost uh, for the 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 backend services to be running uh, you you'll typically pay for your storage and services at any of the online clouds this will also work with any of the sftp clouds out there services that are just designed to provide you an sftp connection so now that we've had this all set up what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to put ourselves into a time stop here and let this backup uh, actually complete. And when it does, we're going to come back and finish off this video showing you uh, kind of some of the functionality of what's taking place there and show you that it actually worked. And then how to go back through and uh, validate or debug situations where things may not have worked in the manner that they wanted. So we'll provide that information to you and get you moving here, moving forward. We're going to go ahead and stop the video now, and uh, it'll pop back up here in just a second as we move forward after our backups have taken place.